Now, just as we talked about the demand side, now we are going to talk about supply side and probably it is going to be a little easier uh, because now you already know about the demand side. So, in the supply side, we are still looking at the same price and quantity relationship in the market, but now we are looking at it from the seller's perspective, right. So, now you consider yourself to be the seller and how would you respond to the price in the market, how would you adjust your selling decision or your quantity supplied in response to the prices in the market. Now, think about it for a minute. If the prices in the market go up and you are the seller, the dollar price goes up, then obviously you want to sell more because you want to make more money by selling. And if the prices in the market go down, then obviously you want to sell less because you don't want to make losses. So, you want to adjust your selling decision that way. So, you can already see that there is a difference on the supply side, there is a difference on the seller's perspective than the buyer's perspective. Now, in the demand side, you have an, had an inverse relationship between price and quantity, but on the supply side, now you have a direct relationship between price and quantity. Whenever price goes up, quantity goes up. Whenever price goes down, quantity goes down. Ceteris paribus, everything else in the market, once again, staying the same. And now you know that when I say ceteris paribus or everything else in the market staying same, I'm actually referring to the non-price factors in the market. So I'm saying that other factors in the market, other non-price factors in the market staying constant, if there is an increase in price, then the quantity supplied by the seller or the supplier will go up. If there is a decrease in price, then the quantity supplied by the seller or the supplier will go down. And this direct relationship between price and quantity, when everything else in the market is held constant, is called the law of supply. Just like the demand side, but the nature of the relationship is different, right? And when you plot this law of supply, when you plot this relationship in a two-dimensional diagram, once again, quantity on the x-axis and the price of the commodity on the y-axis, when you plot this relationship, then it looks something like that. If you have the price P1, then the quantity supplied is Q1. If the price goes up to something like P2, then obviously the quantity supplied also goes up to Q2. And if the price goes down to something like P3, then the quantity supplied goes down to Q3. That's a direct relationship. And if I draw a line through all those price and quantity points, then I get an upward sloping line and that is called the supply curve. Now in this class, I will always call the supply curve the S curve. So the S curve or the upward sloping supply curve is nothing but a graphical representation of the law of supply. So the law of supply or the supply curve have nothing to do with any other factor in the market. They are only a representation of the positive relationship between the price and quantity supplied in the market, right? And just like the demand side, we can go deeper into the mechanism of how this happens. So if this is my starting point, if I start with the price P1 and with the quantity Q1, and that is the point that I am at, if there is an increase in the price, then there is an upward movement along the supply curve so that the quantity supplied goes up. And if there is a decrease in the price, then there is a downward movement along the supply curve so that there is a decrease in the quantity supplied. So once again, the mechanism is also the same as the demand side. As price goes up, as price goes up, there is an upward movement along S curve and as a result of that, the quantity supplied goes up. If there is a decrease in the price, then there is a downward movement
along S curve and that takes the quantity supplied down. Now, please note that these two parts of the relationship, the price going up, the quantity supplied going up, the price going down and the quantity supplied going down, that is my law of supply and the mechanism through which the law of supply works is an upward or a downward movement along the supply curve and this change in quantity that you see is also called a change in quantity supplied. So, the quantity supplied going up or the quantity supplied going down. Please note that this is not a change in supply. So, a change in quantity supplied is very different from a change in supply just like we talked about the same on the demand side. We said that the change in quantity demanded was about a movement along the D curve, no shift and a change in demand was about the shift and it did not refer to any movements along the demand curve. Right? So, similarly on the supply side, here we are talking about a movement alone and that is why it is a change in quantity supplied. We have not yet talked about the change in supply, but we will do that in a minute. Now, once again, if we look at the supply for a commodity, the supply can depend on two factors. One is the own price of the commodity that is the dollar P that we were talking about, the own price and it depends on some non-price factors. Some non-price factors in the market, right. So, whenever we are looking at this part of the relationship and assuming this part to be constant, so everything else or the non-price factors in the market are constant and we are only dealing with a relationship between the own price and the quantity supplied, then this is called a change in quantity supplied. It is coming from the law of supply and it is occurring through a movement along the S curve. It is a movement in the upward direction if the price is going up, it is a movement in the downward direction if the price is going down. Now, if we consider the other part of the relationship, if we now consider the own price to be constant, if we think that this is the constant part and those are the ones that are changing, the non-price factors are changing, then that relationship is the supply shifter relationship. This is what causes a shift of the supply curve and this is also known as a change in supply. And that change in supply is going to happen once again through a right shift or a left shift of the supply curve just as you saw on the demand side. Okay. So, once again here I want to make sure that if any of those non-price factors change such that you get an increase in supply, then that refers to a right shift of the S curve and as a result of that the quantity supplied goes up and if any of those factors change such that there is a decrease in supply then you always get a left shift of the S curve and as a result of that the quantity supplied goes down. Now, this is always going to be true irrespective of which non-price factor we are dealing with. That part of the relationship is always going to be true. A right shift is always an increase in supply, a left shift is always a decrease in supply, an increase in supply will always increase the quantity supplied eventually and a decrease in supply will always decrease the quantity supplied eventually. But now let us talk about what are these non-price factors. The non-price factors on the supply side are very different from the demand side and once again I like to use an acronym for this, I like to use the word ties, where T stands for technology, T 
technology is anything that is about the process of making a good that is what we are talking about technology is the process involved in manufacturing something in making something i stands for input so it is no longer about the income but i is now input and we are talking about both availability as well as the price of the input E stands for expectations, but now since we are on the supply side, this is the expectation of sellers, not buyers. So it is expectation of sellers about price in the future. And then S stands for the number of sellers in the market. So the price of the commodity staying the same if any of these factors change, then what you see is a shift of the supply curve. And if there is an increase in supply, then that shift would be rightward. And if there is a decrease in supply, then that shift would be leftward. Now let's go ahead and talk about these conditions and see how those shifts occur. Once again, I will be posting graphs for you. So I will not be going into the detail each time the detail of the shifts uh, for each case I will just talk to you about the changes but you can take a look at the specific graphs when I post them on blackboard. So we are talking about the supply shifters. The first one is technology right. If there is any improvement in technology or sophisticated technology, then obviously the manufacturer or the seller or the producer can produce more. And if he is able to produce more, then he will be able to supply more. So any improvement in technology always takes the supply up or causes a right shift of the supply curve. And as a result of that, the quantity supplied goes up. Now this is from the quantity from the seller's perspective. Please remember that we are talking about quantity supplied. We are no longer talking about the quantity demanded. And if there is a disimprovement in the technology, if the technology is bad, then the opposite should happen. The supply should go down because now the manufacturer is not able to produce more. So now if they don't produce more, they are not going to supply more. So you will see a left shift of the supply curve as a result of which the quantity supplied will go down, right? So what are we talking about? Think about an example. For example, if uh, let's say the commodity that is being produced is fabric, right? Fabric. So if it is being produced with hand loom, then you maybe uh, the producer produces 10 yards of fabric with the hand loom. Now if there is an improvement in technology, instead of hand loom, if the producer or the seller starts using power loom, then obviously due to the sophistication of the technology, he will be able to produce more. Instead of 10 yards, maybe he is able to produce 100 yards. And if he is able to produce 100 yards, he will be able to bring all that into the market. So the supply into the market will be higher. So any improvement in technology leads to an increase in supply or a right shift. Any disimprovement in technology leads to a decrease in supply or a left shift of the supply curve. The next one was about input. Now that's a very important point. Okay. Now sometimes it is very easy to get confused between input and complement goods. Now here is something that you should remember. A complement good is something that is jointly consumed. So both the goods maintain their own identity, right? For example, chips and salsa. You're eating chips and you're also eating salsa and they are maintaining their own identities just that you're eating them together, right? But in case of input, one goes into the making of the other good and so it does not retain its identity anymore. That's an input. For example, a microchip and a computer. The chip goes into the computer and you are using the computer. So you are only being able to consume one good that is the computer. Similarly, like I said, sugar and soda, 
sugar goes into making the soda. So, when you are drinking soda, the sugar is not maintaining an identity, is no longer retaining an identity of its own, it has gone into making the soda. So, please be when you read the questions, please be a little careful about the difference between a complement good and a, a input. So, input is anything that goes into making another good. If the inputs are abundant, if you have an abundance of input, then obviously you will be able to produce more and supply more, your supply will be higher there will be a right shift of the supply curve and the quantity supplied will be higher. And if there is a scarcity, if the inputs are not easily available, then obviously you cannot use those inputs to make this good. It will be difficult for you to make the good. So, the supply of the good will be lower. Let us say left shift and the quantity supplied will be less. So, what are we talking about? Let us say our commodity is something like blueberry muffins. So, we need blueberries to make blueberry muffins. But let us say there has been like um, a natural calamity, maybe you know a bad uh, tornado that has destroyed the blueberry crops, uh, two third of the nation's blueberry crops, right. So, what will happen? The supply of the input blueberry is less. Since the supply of the input is less, I am now not able to make more of my commodity that is blueberry muffins. So, the supply of blueberry muffins in the market will go down, right. The opposite will happen if blueberries are readily available and easily available. Then I will be able to use them easily and I will be able to make more of blueberry muffins and supply more of blueberry muffins. Now, the third one. is about expectation of sellers. Now, once again it is expectation of the sellers about the future price. Please note the price today is still fixed, the price today is still constant. What is changing is the expectation about price, own price in the future. So, do not get confused here. The own price today is still constant. What is changing is my expectation about the own price in the future. So, this still qualifies as a non price factor. As a seller, if the seller expects the future price to be higher, then it is profitable for the seller to wait till the prices have become higher. So, the seller is not going to supply as much today. So, the supply today is going to be lower, right, because the seller wants to wait when the uh, good becomes expensive because he knows that he can make more money at that point. So, today he is not going to supply a lot. So, there will be a left shift of the supply curve today and as a result of that the quantity supplied will go down. The opposite will happen if the seller expects the future price to be lower, if the seller knows that the prices will drop in the future, then the seller would rather sell it off today, right. So, today the supply is going to be high. If the seller knows that around Christmas the price for uh, you know maybe uh, summer flip flops is going to go down then the seller would rather flip sell off all his flip flops today and not wait until future when the price actually drops and he is able to make less money. So, he would rather sell it off today. So, the supply today will be higher or today you are going to see a right shift and as a result of that the quantity supply today is going to be higher, right. And the last and the final one, the fourth one is about the number of sellers in the market, which again is pretty intuitive. If you have more sellers in the market, if the number of sellers is higher, then obviously the supply will be higher. More people selling the goods, so the supply is higher and the quantity supplied is higher. 
if the number of sellers in the market is less, then the supply is less. So that's a left shift of the supply. And as a result of that, the quantity supplied is going to be less. Now, please note that in each case, all this discussion that we have done, the implicit assumption is that the own price of the commodity is still the same. There is no change in the price of the commodity. What is changing is a non-price factor, which could be technology, which could be inputs, which could be expectation of the sellers, and which could be the number of uh, sellers in the uh, market which is basically changing the supply in the market. So we have covered this part. So we know that if any of these factors change with the price being constant, then you get a shift of the supply curve. And that shift is in the right whenever the supply increases. The shift is in the left whenever the supply decreases. For an increase in supply, the quantity supplied goes up. For a decrease in supply, the quantity supplied goes down. And if these non-price factors are unchanged, if these factors remain constant in the market, and it's only a relationship between quantity supplied and the price, then there is no shift of the supply curve. Instead, you see a movement along the supply curve, and that is basically a representation of the law of supply. Okay. We have now individually covered the demand side and the supply side. So now we are going to bring the two sides together and look at the dynamics of demand and supply in a market. In other words, we will see how the buyers and sellers interact in the market and how they reach a point of agreement or the equilibrium in the market. And how does that equilibrium get affected if there is an imbalance on either side, if there is an increase or decrease in demand, or there is an increase or decrease in supply, then how does uh, the equilibrium in the market get affected. So once again, we have the same two-dimensional diagram. We have price in the y-axis and quantity in the x-axis. We have the demand curve, which is downward sloping, the D curve. And we have the supply curve, which is upward sloping, or the S curve. Now there is a unique point of intersection between the demand and supply. And that unique point of intersection is actually the equilibrium point, which is denoted by capital E. So capital E is the equilibrium point. Please note that at the equilibrium point, the quantity demanded, which is read from the demand curve, is the same as the quantity supplied, which is read from the supply curve. So at this point, the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the quantity supplied, right? And that is the equilibrium quantity. That particular quantity is called equilibrium quantity. So we are going to denote it by QE. So QE is nothing but the quantity where the quantity demanded at which uh, the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the quantity supplied. Now, similarly, on the y-axis, we can read, we can interpret that point where the price of the buyer is exactly equal to the price of the seller, and that's called the equilibrium price, and we denote it by PE. Now, let us assume that for whatever reason, there is an increase in the price in the market. The price in the market has gone up, so it has gone up from PE to something like P1. Now, we have covered that as price goes up in the market, there is an upward movement along the demand curve, and there is an upward movement along the supply curve. As a result of that, on the demand side, the quantity demanded should go down. So that is my Q1, but D, that is my quantity demanded. So the quantity is lower than QE, and this D basically represents this is the quantity demanded because I'm representing it, I'm reading it from the demand curve. So this is my quantity demanded when the price is P1. And please note that it follows the law of demand. The price has gone up, P1 is higher than PE, so the quantity demanded is lower than QE. 
Similarly, at this price P1, this is my quantity supplied. I am reading it from the supply curve. I will call it Q1S. So, Q1D is my quantity demanded and Q1S is my quantity supplied when the price is P1. Please note also on the supply side, the law of supply is valid. As price has gone up, P1 is higher than PE. The quantity supplied QS1 is higher than QE. So, the law of supply is valid. Price has gone up, the quantity supplied has gone up. Law of demand is valid because price has gone up, quantity demanded has gone down. Now, if this happens, now along P1, we no longer have a unique point of intersection between demand and supply curve. Instead, we have a divergence between demand and supply curve. And you can clearly see that at this point, the quantity supplied QS1 is greater than the quantity demanded QD1. Whenever this situation happens, this is known as excess supply. That means the supply is higher. This is called excess supply or in other words, this is also called surplus. So, whenever the price is higher than the original equilibrium, we get excess supply or surplus in the market. Now, let's see what happens if the price goes down. Now, for whatever reason, if the price goes below the equilibrium price, something like P2, then once again, you have a downward movement along the supply curve and you have a downward movement along the demand curve. And once again, please note, there is no unique point of intersection along the uh, P2 line. Instead, you have a divergence between the demand and the supply curve. So now at price P2, the quantity supplied is Q2S. I'm reading it from the supply curve. And the quantity demanded is Q2D. Please note that as price has gone down, the quantity demanded has gone up. QD2 is greater than QE. And price has gone down, so the quantity supplied has also gone down. The QS2 is less than QE, right? So we are basically saying, I'm trying to say that if P1 is greater than dollar PE, then these are the things that we get to see. The QD1, the quantity demanded, is less than the QE, but the quantity supplied, it's the other way around. Let me keep the notations right. QS1, that is higher than QE due to the law of demand and law of supply. And similarly, if dollar P2, that's less than dollar PE. So the QD2, that is going to be higher than the QE. And the Q2S, that's going to be lower than the QE. So we see this relationship due to the law of demand and supply. Now please note here, the QD2 that is greater than the QS2, so the quantity demanded is higher than quantity supplied. Whenever there is a situation like that, this is known as excess demand or in other words, this is also called shortage. So whenever the price is below the equilibrium price, the original equilibrium price, there is a shortage in the market. So any time that the price rises above the equilibrium or goes below the equilibrium, there is a disagreement between the buyers and the sellers. And this disagreement will give rise to a surplus if the prices have gone up. And it will give rise to a shortage when the prices have gone down. But, but in most cases, whenever there is a surplus or a shortage, the market is able to take care of itself. It is able to rectify or correct itself on its own due to the pressures that builds within the market. For example, if there is a surplus, it means that there are more goods supplied than what is demanded for. So in this situation, if you are a seller, how will you sell your goods? 
you have more goods available in the market than what is being demanded. In this situation, if you had to sell your goods, what would you do? Obviously, you would have to lower your prices in order to make sure that your goods are sold. So in this situation, in case of a surplus, there will be a downward pressure on the prices and that will continue until the price comes back to the equilibrium and there is agreement restored in the market. The quantity demanded goes back to being quantity, sub equal, goes back being equal to quantity supplied and the equilibrium quantity and price are restored in the market. Similarly, if there is a shortage in the market, then it means that there are more people wanting to buy the good than what is available. In that situation, if you are a buyer and you have to buy the good, then you will bid the prices up. You will be willing to pay more and if you do that, then those pressures are eventually going to take the price up and that's going to continue until all the imbalance in the market is wiped out then the price is restored back to PE where the quantity demanded goes back to being equal to quantity supplied and the market goes back to equilibrium. So that's why I'm taking you back to that same uh, principle that we started at in lecture note one where we say that the markets always try to move towards an equilibrium. So whenever there is an imbalance in the market, the market will adjust in itself to go back to the equilibrium point, to go back to the agreement point. So that is what we were talking about. So any surplus or shortage in the market is not forever. In response to the surplus or the shortage, the market will adjust in terms of price and quantity to go back to the equilibrium point. And sometimes the market is not able to do that on its own and in that case it will need an exogenous intervention from a third party to restore that equilibrium back in the market. But anyways, we are not looking at that part now. Here we are just talking about how the imbalance is created and once the imbalance is created, how the market forces can take the market back to the equilibrium point. So next we are going to talk about the dynamics of demand and supply in the market. What happens when the demand or the supply changes in the market? Okay. And to talk about this, I am going to uh, divide the content into four cases. So let's talk about case one, which is an increase in demand, case two, which is a decrease in demand, case three, which is an increase in supply, and case four, which is a decrease in supply. Now, Please note that we have a market. The market means there is a demand curve and there is a supply curve. And the point at which both intersect is the equilibrium in the market. And corresponding to the equilibrium, we have the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price. So this is what it looks like. Now let's say for whatever reason, there is an increase in the demand. Now you know that this increase in demand that can be caused by the non-price factors in the market on the demand side, which we have already covered, the tribe factors, right? So if any of those tribe factors change in such a way that there is an increase in demand, then what you see is a right shift of the demand curve, the right shift of the D curve. So the price staying constant, no change in the price of the commodity. Initially, step one, there is no change in the price. What happens is only a right shift of the demand curve to something like D dash. But after the shift has taken place, there is a step two. There is an impact on the market. Please understand this very carefully. Step one, the price is not changing. What is changing 
is one of the demand shifting factors, those strife factors, right? Either taste or preferences or price of substitute or complements or income of buyers. One of those factors are changing such that the demand in the market has gone up. If the demand goes up, then there is a right shift of the demand curve. Initially, the price is held constant, no change in the price. But once that demand has shifted, then there is a step two, and that step two is there is a new equilibrium generated in the market. Please note the new equilibrium is the intersection point of the new demand curve D dash and the original supply curve S S. And at that new equilibrium, your quantity, equilibrium quantity in the market is higher and the equilibrium price in the market is higher. So once again, what we are saying here is that in the market, everything else staying the same, no change on the supply side. If something changes on the demand side, a non-price factor changes on the demand side such that there is an increase in demand, then you will see a right shift of the demand curve initially at the same price. And as a result of that increase or right shift in demand in step two, there will be a new equilibrium in the market and at that new equilibrium, the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price in the market goes up. So we can safely say that an increase in demand causes an increase in equilibrium quantity and an increase in equilibrium price. This is something that will always be true. This will never be violated. Whenever there's a right shift of demand, equilibrium price and quantity in the market will always go up. Now, the opposite will be true if there is a decrease in demand. So once again, that's the demand curve, that's the supply curve, that's the initial equilibrium in the market, that's the equilibrium quantity, that's the equilibrium price. Now initially, with no change in price, nothing happens to price, price is still the same, it's constant. If some, one of the tri factor changes such that there is a decrease in demand, maybe there are less buyers in the market now, something like that. Now you have a new demand curve D double dash, that's the step one. And as a result of that, step two, you now have a new equilibrium in the market E double dash, as a result of which, the quantity, equilibrium quantity goes down to Q double dash and the equilibrium price goes down to P double dash. So whenever there is a decrease in demand, first you see a left shift of the demand curve with no change in price, but as a result of that left shift, eventually the equilibrium quantity goes down and the equilibrium price goes down and this is true no matter what, no matter which factor is causing it that's always going to be true. Let's talk about the supply side now. So same thing, there is a demand curve, there is a supply curve, there is an initial equilibrium in the market, there's an initial equilibrium quantity, there's an initial equilibrium price. Now let's say the price being constant, if one of the factors on the supply side, one of the non-price factors on the supply side change, for example, the ties factor, right? We are now talking about the ties factors. Let's say the inputs are now more available, more inputs are available. So obviously you are able to produce more and supply more. So that will be represented through a right shift of the supply curve, S curve to something like S dash. Initially, the price is constant, no change in price. But eventually, in step two, after the shift has taken place, you will see a new equilibrium in the market at which the quantity, equilibrium quantity is higher, but the equilibrium price is lower, right? So that means whenever there is an increase in supply or a right shift of the supply curve, then the impact of that is an increase in equilibrium quantity, but a decrease in equilibrium price in the market. And that will always be true, no matter which factor is causing the change in supply.
the last one that is a decrease in supply Now, if one of the ties factor changes in such a way that the supply goes down, then at the initial price, price staying constant, there will be a left shift of the supply curve to something like S double dash. And as a result of that left shift, now you have a new equilibrium in the market E double dash. At the new equilibrium, the equilibrium quantity in the market goes down and the equilibrium price in the market is higher. So, as a result of the supply decrease or a left shift of the supply curve, you eventually get a decrease in the equilibrium quantity, but an increase in the equilibrium price in the market and that will be true no matter what factor is causing the supply change. So, basically your takeaway from this, these four cases that we have just discussed is that whenever the, there is one change in the market, there is either a demand change or a supply change with the other side in the market being constant. So, in this case, there is this side on the left hand side, we have demand change in the market with no change in supply. On the right hand side, we have supply change in the market with no change in demand then there will be some change, some impact on the equilibrium quantity and price in the market. In case of demand, the equilibrium price and quantity will always go in the same direction as the demand change. If demand goes up, equilibrium price and quantity both go up. If demand goes down, equilibrium price and quantity both go down. However, on the supply side, as supply goes up, the equilibrium quantity goes up but price goes down. So, quantity always takes the same direction as supply, but price takes the opposite direction. If supply goes down, then quantity equilibrium quantity in the market goes down, but price goes in the opposite direction. Now, this is very important for you to remember. These are very important. The effects on equilibrium price and quantity are very important for you to remember. When we go on to the problem solving videos, I will talk about uh, these uh, questions which refer to a demand change or a supply change and you will see how equilibrium quantity and price in the market changes due to a demand or a supply shift. Now, here we are only talking about one change at a time. So, we are either talking about a demand change when there is no change in supply or we are talking about a supply change when there is no change in demand. But alternatively, there may be an even more complex situation where both demand and supply are changing in the market at the same time. So, last and final part of the chapter is where we talk about the simultaneous shifts of demand and supply. Now, the simultaneous shifts of demand and supply refers to you know one change on the demand side and the other change on the supply side. So, let us say our case 5 is an increase in demand along with an increase in supply, right. So, basically what we are saying is it is case 1 plus uh, case 3 happening together, right. Then you have your case 6, case 6 is an increase in demand, but that is happening with a decrease in supply. So, case 1 and case 4 happening together at the same time. Then you have a case 7, which is a decrease in demand along with an increase in supply. So, case 2 and case 3 taken together. 
and finally, you have case 8 where your case 8 is a decrease in demand plus a decrease in supply. So, case 2 and case 4 happening together. Now, whenever you have simultaneous shifts in demand and supply, my advice to you is not to get your results by drawing a diagram because your diagram will often lead to a very a certain result, a very, uh, a very predictive result, but often in this situation as you will see that there is ambiguity involved and you are not able to capture that ambiguity when you draw a diagram. Okay? So, my advice is not to draw a diagram in this case. Now, from your case 1, you know that whenever the demand increases, that means the demand shifts right whenever there is a right shift of demand, the effect is always an increase in equilibrium quantity and an increase in equilibrium price happening at the same time. And when there is an increase in supply, that means whenever there is a right shift of the supply, there is an increase in equilibrium quantity, but there is a decrease in equilibrium price. Now, when these two things happen together, then please note that you have a very definitive answer about the equilibrium quantity. You know that the equilibrium quantity will rise for sure because both forces of demand and supply are taking the equilibrium quantity up, but when it comes to equilibrium price, there is ambiguity. One is taking the price up, the other is taking the price down. So, we do not know what really happens to the price. So, we can say equilibrium price is ambiguous or uncertain or indeterminate all mean the, mean the same thing. That means there are three possibilities. There can be an increase in price, there can be a decrease in price or Alternatively, the price stays same, there is no change in price. All three are possible, the price could go up, it could go down or it could stay the same, that is what we mean by ambiguous or uncertain. Now the price will go up, this will happen obviously if the demand effect is stronger than the supply effect because it is the demand one which has taken the price up. So, if the demand effect is stronger, if the demand pull is stronger, the price will go up. If the supply effect is stronger, then the price will go down because it is the, it is the supply side that has taken the price down. Right? So, it is the supply force that is taking the price down. So, if the supply force is stronger, then the price will eventually go down. And if the two forces are exactly equal to each other, if the rise in demand is exactly equal to the rise in supply, then there will be no change in the price of the, in the equilibrium price of the commodity in the market. So, all three are possible and it really depends on which force is stronger or whether they are the same, you see the final result on the price. But you have a definitive answer about the quantity for sure. Now, similarly, here in case 6, you can see that whenever there is a right shift of demand, you will see an increase in quantity and you will see an increase in equilibrium price. But along with the right shift of demand, you also have a left shift of supply happening simultaneously, a decrease in supply. So, that is going to take the quantity down and it is going to take the price up. So, I know these from my four cases, case 1, case 2, case 3 and case 4, those are the ones that tell me which way it will go. Now, once again, please note that here I have a definitive answer about the price. I know for sure that equilibrium price is going to go up because both demand and supply forces take it up, but I do not have a definitive answer about the quantity. So, my equilibrium quantity is ambiguous or uncertain or indeterminate, whatever you want to call it, which means there are three possibilities for equilibrium quantity. 
equilibrium quantity can actually go up or it can go down or it stays same. Okay. Now, this will happen equilibrium quantity will go up if the demand side is stronger. So, if the demand increase is stronger than the supply decrease then that will happen because actually it is the demand force that takes the quantity up. Similarly, if the supply decrease is stronger than the demand increase then you will see a decrease in the quantity because the supply side is the one that pulls the quantity down and if the two forces exactly cancel each other out if they are exactly equal then there will be no change in the quantity equilibrium quantity in the market. Now, the reason I told you not to draw a diagram not to draw a graph is because whenever you draw a graph you are able to capture only one of these possibilities you are not able to see the ambiguous relation instead you always end up getting a definitive answer for both the uh, variables. Now, here let us say I have a left shift of demand, but that is happening along with a right shift of supply. Then I know that quantity is going to go down, price is going to go down due to the demand side. Due to the supply side, the quantity will go up, but the price will go down but now the two are happening together remember it is simultaneous change. So, I have a definitive answer about the price for sure I know what happens to the price. So, price will go down for sure, but I do not have a definite answer for the quantity. So, the quantity effect is ambiguous. Once again all three are possible for the quantity it could go up or it could go down or it stays same. The quantity will go up if the supply effect is stronger because the force of supply actually takes the quantity up. So, if the supply rise is higher than the demand fall then this will happen. If the demand fall is stronger than the supply rise then the quantity will eventually go down and if the two effects are of equal strength then they will cancel each other out so that there is no effect on the equilibrium quantity eventually. Now, we do not know which one happens for sure right it depends on a case to case basis. So, unless I tell you which force is stronger you are not really able to get a definitive answer for uh, both equilibrium price and quantity I have to tell you which one is stronger. And the last and final one which is a right shift of the demand curve sorry a left shift of the demand curve happening with a left shift of the supply. So, it is a left shift of demand along with a left shift of supply Q e is going down P e is going down here the Q e goes down, but P e goes up. So, once again you have a definitive answer about the quantity you know for sure that the equilibrium quantity will go down because both forces are taking it down, but you do not have a definite answer for price that could be ambiguous or uncertain. So, all three are possible price could go up or it could go down or stay same.
really depends on which one is stronger. So price would go up if obviously the supply decrease is stronger as you can see. So if the decrease in supply is stronger than the decrease in demand, then the price would go up. The price would go down in the market if the demand decrease is stronger. And then if both forces of demand and supply are of the strength, same strength, then they cancel each other out and there is no impact on the equilibrium price. So first, so we have first taken a look at case 1, case 2, case 3 and case 4 where we were talking about a single shift of either demand or supply and we saw how a single shift of demand or a single shift of supply impacts the equilibrium quantity or the equilibrium price in the market. Please note that in this case, initially the price in the market is the same, the own price is constant and a non-price factor in the market either on the demand side or on the supply side is changing to cause that shift. But once the shift has taken place, there is a follow-up step. There is a step 2 and that step 2 is what causes a change in equilibrium quantity or price in the market. And then we went on to discuss the simultaneous shifts where we brought those cases together. We combined those cases and we got four new cases, case 5, case 6, case 7 and case 8 where we are talking about a demand and a supply change happening at the same time together. And whenever there is this simultaneous shift of demand and supply, you can see that you can get a definitive answer either for the equilibrium quantity or for the equilibrium price, but one of them tends to be ambiguous and you will have to know exactly about the strength of the demand and supply forces to get a definitive answer about both. Now when we go on to the problem solving videos, I will spend more time discussing cases where we see single shifts of demand or supply or simultaneous shifts of demand and supply and then hopefully you will kind of understand how that works in the real world in the real market.